bound statements and connectives. Let's define first what are compound statements. Compound statements are statements that combine two or more simple statements using connectives. Connectives is defined as words used to join simple statements like the word and, the word or, the word if then, and lastly the word if and only if. So those are the connectives. So first let's summarize the symbolic forms uh, for all those words. So let's start from the last section, the word not. This means negation. And the symbol, it's like a, a wavy sign or like a sine wave or a knockdown S. The next word is and. And refers to conjunction. And the symbol for and it's think about the capital letter A. So that's similar. The next one is or. And it refers to uh, disjunction. And the symbol would be the flip of and. It's like uh, letter V. Again, it's the opposite of your end. Next would be the F then statement. We call this conditional. And the symbol is like a ray pointing to the right side. And the last one is if and only if and this would be biconditional. By means two, so two directions. So it's going to be going to the right and going to the left. So, so you have two arrowheads, left and right. Okay, so let's uh, have an example. So here's an example. So we assigned the symbolic logic P for the first statement and Q for the second. And then when you use and connect that with the word N over here, then in symbolic form, you're using that uh, symbol like the capital letter A. So P with the statement here as given and Q with the statement is given here and you can actually say that it is after 5 p.m. and connect it with N, they are working. Okay, and similarly with uh, the symbol not. 
So since we're using the word not here, and that refers to that symbol. So we have the symbolic form of the statement. Okay, so let's analyze the other table. So using and, uh, we have the English equivalent statement. So commonly used and here, the word and represent the symbol here. So that's the symbolic form. And on the first column, we have the symbolic statement. The second column would be the English statement. And the third column would be the example. So as you can see in the third column here, it is used as that one. So given your um, statement P in symbolic form and Q. Okay, and we do the same thing in the second row. And you can also use instead of and, you can use but and refers to the same symbol. So same with the word yet and the word nevertheless still refers to the same symbol. And you have the example on the third call. Okay, so for the if-then statement, um, it says the compound statement if P then Q is symbolized by, so the symbol here for if-then statement, again, it's the uh, arrow pointing to the right. So there are two parts of the if-then statement. So, and we call this conditional statement, that's the name, and the statement before that, it's the antecedent, so that's the term, and the statement after the first statement would be the consequent, that's after uh, the word uh, then, so that should be term used. Okay, so next would be the F and only F. Remember the symbol here is uh, two bidirectional arrow. So that would be here at the bottom. And using the Definition here, it says by conditional statements are conditional statements that are true if the statement still true when the antecedent and consequent are reversed. So looking at the example below, the only if and only if statements here that is true when we reversed the antecedent and consequent. So it's the second. And that's the if and only if statement exactly. Okay, so here's the Summary for the statements uh, of symbolic logic. So negation, we're using this symbol. Conjunction, we're using uh, the symbol like a capital letter A. So this is a little bit distorted uh, from the PowerPoint slide. This junction is the opposite of that one, so it's like the V-shape. And the conditional, it's the uh, arrow pointing to the right, my conditional is the arrow is 
pointing to the right and to the left. It's bidirectional arrow. Okay. So in the first column, it's the name. We identify that in the beginning of this presentation. And second is the symbolic form. And the third uh, column, it's the translation in English language. Okay. So we have another uh, example here. Expressing symbolic statements with parentheses in uh, English. So on the first column, we have the symbolic statement. On the second column would be the statements to group together. And on the third column would be the English translation. OK, so let's uh, correct the symbols here. So this should be the conjunction. And you have the conjunction uh, here also. And here on the other symbol, the first column would be the conditional. Okay. So because this refers to the word and here on the third column, so we have that symbol there. I'll mark that one. We have the add symbol. And it says F then that goes with this symbol. Okay. And that's the example. In the second uh, row, that would be the word and, and and should be this. Then it says if not. B, then that R. So that should be the if then statement. Okay, so that's the example. So you can prove that by having a true table on uh, the next uh, section. So we're learning true tables in the next section. And then we have the dominance of connect terms here. So if the symbolic statement appears without parentheses, uh, statements before and after most dominant connectives should be grouped. So this is similar to algebra that uh, we used to group it using parentheses. Okay, if not, then we have to follow the sign convention or the PIMDAS. Uh, that's the order of operations, which one to take it first. So the most dominant here is the biconditional, so which is this symbol here. And thinking about this rule here, this should be the last one that you have to actually uh, do. Uh, that's the biconditional. And the list dominant would be the first one that you have to do with the expressions. So that's the order of the connectives.